Well, welcome to Sigma Live, Dr. Samadhi. Uh, we have him with us today. He's a specialist in robotic surgery, a leading expert in this field who has uh, completed many, many surgeries and uh, who will be opening an institute in Cyprus. So let us begin. How did you get started in robotic surgery, Dr. Samadhi? Well, first of all, I wanted to thank you for, for the interview and also it's a pleasure to be in Cyprus. Um, I started in robotic surgery sometime around 2000 and at that time I was uh, performing a lot of open surgeries. Um, laparoscopic surgery in France was becoming popular and because I'm always curious to see how we can advance the field, I went from New York and spent a year in France and learned laparoscopic surgery for prostate cancer. And while we were there, the first 11 robotic surgeries was performed and I just happened to be at the right time, at the right place, seeing not only the marriage between the technology and also the science of, of surgery. And when you combine, you know, the old-fashioned surgery and you bring the technology, along with the laparoscopic surgery, I said, you know what, this is the real magic. And at that time, a lot of people didn't think that this was going to be panning out. Well, fast forward that story 15 years later, and over 6,000 robotic surgeries later, um, we are able to do this not only in U.S., but bring this all over the world. And I have, um, I'm very fortunate and have a great news for you that the first robotic prostate surgery was performed in Limassol, and the first smart technique robotic surgery was done in the entire country of Cyprus. And we're so honored and, and pleased to be here with you and the rest of the country. Wow, that is really interesting. Um, we, so we've heard about the machinery and that it can be quite difficult to use sometimes, especially for doctors to get used to it as it involves using all four limbs, not only your hands, but your feet as well. Um, I'm just curious as to how long it took you to learn how to use all four limbs to perform the surgeries. Yes, this is a very important question because a lot of people and patients, when they think of robotic surgery, they may think, well, it's the robot that does the operation, and that's absolutely not the case. It's the surgeon that performs the entire operation, and I always tell the patients that an experienced uh, surgeon plus the technology of the robot means good outcome. Inexperienced surgeon or somebody who is just learning plus the technology means a lot of complications. And we hear about complications of robotic surgery. That has nothing to do with the robot. It has to do with the fact that the surgeon is not comfortable yet. So what this hospital in Limassol has done, Mediterranean Hospital, and this Dr. David Samadhi Robotic Institute is, that we don't want to practice on, on patients. We don't need to bring in surgeons that are learning and practicing on patients because it's not right and it's gonna to lead to a lot of complications. Having done thousands of these cases, now these surgeries takes about an hour to an hour and a half. They get to go home the next day. There's no transfusion or bleeding. And what's more important is that they're able to enjoy quality of life. For a lot of men, sex is a huge part of this. You can't tell a 40-year-old, 50-year-old, a 60-year-old man that you're not gonna have any sexual function after this. So because of our experience in open surgery and using the technology, now 80% of my patients are able to have sexual function, 97% are able to have urinary control and enjoy life. And that's a huge part of this. I think it takes hundreds and hundreds of these cases to really get comfortable. And you have to be committed to it. You have to have a team. You really have to dedicate a lot of time and effort. It's not like you can just buy the robot and start practicing and you're a robotic surgeon. That's a false statement. And patients have to be always careful. The concept that I have a robot about a mile away from me, why should I go to another hospital? That's because experience matters. Mm. And that's what's important. And you touched on the mail um, system, and which I know that you're a specialist in. Um, I would really like to see the. I find it interesting to find out why someone should choose um, surgery over radiation, especially in the prostate area. As you know, there are a lot of options for prostate cancer, and when you're hit with the news of prostate cancer, which is a silent killer, there are no symptoms, and the doctor says, by the way, you have prostate cancer, there's so much information online, and there's a lot of misinformation online. 
Maybe you can get high food, maybe you can get seed implant, maybe radiation, maybe surgery. Now, a lot of times, people shy away from surgery because they thought maybe it leads to incontinence and impotence. And I can tell you today, in 2015, we really have made a huge leap in this field where patients can enjoy quality of life. You will be continent, you will get your sexual function back. Never 100% guarantee, but we've done a huge uh, advancement in this field. Why surgery over radiation? Because with surgery, you remove the entire prostate. You don't do that with radiation. So I can look at the patient and say, this is how much cancer you had. This is how far your cancer has gone. This is the stage of your cancer. And what's important is six weeks after surgery, your PSA should be zero. That's not true with radiation. If the cancer returns after surgery, which can happen in about five to 10% of the time, guess what? I can still give radiation after surgery. So I can give radiation after surgery, but if I do radiation, I can't do surgery. So you, you burn bridges. And I think that long term, radiation can cause a lot of collateral damage. Radiation causes cancer. We see rectal cancer, we see bladder cancer from radiation. So the old fashioned thinking that I'm gonna go in and an hour later I'm gonna get seed implant and I'll be fine, that's not the way to go anymore. And the other thing is men go on for years. It's not, 65 is not old anymore. They go into their 70s and 80s and 90s. So we want a long-term plan and long-term investment is get the cancer out, understand what your PSA is, keep all the options open, and not only be cured of cancer, but have great quality of life. And that's what we have, and that's what we brought with this institute to Cyprus. And I think this is the biggest news, not only for medical advancement, but economically, because you're gonna see a lot of patients from other countries would wanna to come to a neutral zone. We've done this in Israel, we've done this in Greece, we've done it in many other countries, but now let's find a neutral area called Cyprus, a country that is open and patients can come in from all over the world, get their surgery, family can enjoy their quality of life and go back home. Um, we, you touched on laparoscopic surgery and prostate surgery for robotic surgery. Do you, are you aware if there's any other advancements in robotic surgery? Are there any, are there trials or anything that in other parts of the body? Sure, what we have done is obviously one of my techniques, which is called smart technique, is that instead of the old fashioned robotic surgery where we would move the nerves out and then take the prostate, or we would do the nerve sparing and then take the prostate out, you run the risk of damaging those nerves. Now with the smart technique that we developed, and it's a robotic surgery, I leave all the surrounding tissues completely intact and I come on top and take the prostate out while we leave all the nerves that are responsible for sexual function alone. And that's why there was a big advancement in sexual function and continence. We're moving this robotic surgery to gynecology. We're gonna be doing myomectomies and hysterectomies. We're moving to general surgery where all the low anterior resection for bowel cancers can be done this way. We're going to bring in other surgeons from ears, nose, and throat for tongue cancer. So I think any time, and your question is well taken, where you used to do laparoscopic surgery, now we can do it robotic surgery. And it makes a lot of sense, right? Because in laparoscopic surgery, we had one camera, so it was a two-dimensional view. Now we have three-dimensional view. You have a great range of motion where the, all, the arms are moved right here at the wrist as opposed to the elbow. We can see much better the precision part of the operation. And guess what? Since there's no blood in the field, like open surgery, I can see well. If I can see well, I don't have to touch. So the concept of open surgeon saying like, hey, I need tactile feedback, or I can touch your prostate, I can do a better operation, doesn't make any more sense. Because if I can see in a bloodless field and do a great operation, that's the future, and the future is here. That is very great to hear actually because it opens up a whole new set of um, options for surgery, especially that for surgeries that were considered extremely difficult. Um, we, we touched a bit on uh, why you brought the Institute to Cyprus. Um, do you have any other reasons besides it being a neutral zone for bringing it to Cyprus? Well, I think when this hospital, Mediterranean Hospital in Lemisol, they approached me and they had the right approach and the right vision. And the administration and our good colleagues, the urologists, 
um, came to me and they said, look, we don't want to go through the same old-fashioned way of bringing three, four urologists, start practicing on all the patients, and build our way up. We want that experience of 6,000 surgeries that you've done. We want to have collaboration with urologists and other doctors. And my job is to expand our collaboration all over the world, globally. Yes, I'm the chair of Urology at Lenox Hill Hospital, one of the best hospitals in New York City. I run the whole robotic program over there. But as a result of these collaborations, we've been able to learn a lot from each other. And I think there are tons of urologists in Cyprus that ha are doing a fantastic job. Let's see how we can advance the science. Let's see how we can advance the research through the institute to the next level. And ultimately, the patients are the ones that benefit from this. Mm -hmm. If you can capture the cancer early on while it's contained and it hasn't gone out, if the bird hasn't escaped the cage, why do chemotherapy? What do we need to do radiation for? Let's just cure people and get them back to their family and relatives. And I think this is a big news for this country. And uh, they really have turned the clock 15 years forward and said, we're gonna have this in Limassol. And by the way, this institute welcomes other doctors. I'm available. If any urologist, any, any other doctors would like to talk to me about how they could be part of this and how we can collaborate, we're here to help and advance science and medicine. That is really great, especially with opening up options to other doctors. Um, another question that we have, will you be practicing at the Institute from time to time? Because I know you are based in New York. Obviously, I have a very busy schedule and I have a very busy uh, surgical schedule in New York but we're working closely as a consultant and training the urologists and the doctors in the hospital. Um, and, and my job is to make sure that the patient's outcome is well. Um, I would not be the primary surgeons all the time. For a lot of international patients, I'm happy to help. But our local urologists are going to be working with us. And my job is to make sure that the patients are safe, that these surgeries are done without complications, and good outcome. That's what I'm looking for and really you know, do a lot of clinical trials and research together. Well, that is great. That is all the questions I had, and I think you did a great job for uh, helping us with bringing robotic surgery to Cyprus and bringing these new methods that will really change a lot of lives, especially with cancer and with all the new doors opening with this new technology, especially making it easier for surgeons. Um, thank you very much thank for coming you. to sit and interview with us. It was a pleasure talking to you yeah. and I also want to let people know that if you are early in your 40s, if you have family history of prostate cancer, if there is genetic component, don't be scared of getting that blood test called PSA early on uh, and know what your PSA is. And if you're diagnosed with prostate cancer, even though it's called the silent killers and there are no symptoms, it should not be a death sentence. The cure is there, getting a second opinion, choosing the right surgeon and choosing wisely, plus the robotic technology in the hands of right people means good outcome. Your quality of life is also very important, your sex life, your continence, and we're here. We're here to help. This is like to really advance, and the country is very open, and I congratulate people in Cyprus from the president all the way down to the physicians and doctors and administrations, and including yourself, who are bringing this to public. And I think you're doing a, a, a really uh, fantastic job. And we're honored to be part of this. And thank you for all of your hospitality. Besides the, the nightlife and the food and the friendship, I can't say enough. So thank you again. No problem. Thank you so much for giving people so many options. Thank you.